at this point it's probably been a reported from cnn and a number of other news outlets probably an hour two hours so this is brand new news um but sinaloa leader uh el mayo was captured this morning uh leaving a plane in el paso texas um he was arrested with a uh, former sinaloa leader el chapo guzman's son uh, which prompted a lot of people to wonder like how did the feds catch both these guys at the same time how did they know about it um so the reason i called you was because that's what i thought because the news actually broke maybe like 10 hours ago 12 hours ago but just just an hour ago cnn is reporting that uh the u.s operation to capture el mayo uh they used the help of el chapo son um <laughs> Yeah, so that's that. I thought that was crazy. Like, so El Chapo's son set up El Mayo. Uh, what's like your initial feeling? Like, when I sent you that, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was your initial feeling on that news? First of all, I feel like they're mad messy by airing out who their secret agent is. I feel like they should have kept that information under wraps for a while because now, you know, heads are about to roll over this information because that's a straight back door. Basically, at the end of the day, though, in this kind of um field in that kind of job field I feel like he should have known he should have always been on point um and always looking out for some backdoor stuff I don't know how he ended up getting like I feel like the money starts getting you a little bit soft and comfortable he was supposed to he was supposed to know it was like how he get on the plane like why he get on the plane well according to the article I guess they were supposed to go check out some land like as two buddies getting on a plane and um so the way that the FBI did it, they arrested both of them to make them both seem, you know, like they were both in trouble. But come to find out, his son was the one that was snitching on everything and he was all part of the plan. So I'm sure he's sitting in the cell right now and he's like, what? You know, yeah, that like, was um, crazy. That's the crazy backdoor situation. Crazy backdoor. Like when you get towed on and your lawyer brings you the paperwork and you start seeing your friend's names and the <laughs> lot of you like, dang. You know, so check this out, Dre. I don't know if you know, but I actually did a documentary on this dude, El Mayo, maybe like two years ago. Did you? And in the documentary, I had broke down how the real leader of the Sinaloa cartel. I mean, it was already public knowledge for people who was in the know, but it the real leader was really El Mayo. Mm. Um, and there was a story that actually turned out to be true. El Mayo's son, back in about 2013, 2012, he was captured and he was brought to Chicago. They had him in the Fed jail right there on Clark Street in Chicago. It's like over there. Yep, Come yep, on. they had him over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I told you, man, you on top of the world, man. I know it feels good every morning waking up on top of the world, man. Listen, it got old now. I forget that I'm even in the penthouse. <laughs> but yeah but they had him in that jail right down the street and after a couple years i believe it was maybe like 2014 late 2014 he indicated to the feds like look man i can't take this jail shit let me call my father who was el mayo uh mm. ishmael zambada garcia that's his that's his government so the dude calls his dad talks to him for a few hours and then within months the feds have all the information they need to capture El Chapo. Damn. So not only did, did El Mayo's son provide information to capture El Chapo, but then he testified at the trial of El Chapo. Then America sent them back to Mexico. Like, thanks for your hard work. You're, you're free now. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this story, not only was I looking like, yo, they got El Mayo. El Chapo's son kind of returned the favor to El Mayo because El Mayo's son testified on El Chapo and got him life in the feds. Wow. So it's like wait, the double wait. backdoor situation. Right, right. So it was actually some long time coming type of thing. It was some long time coming. And it was like a plot, stuff. plot, scheme, scheme type of thing. No, facts, man. So when I when I when I read the story, man, that's that was like the first thing that, that came to my mind was yo, El Mayo son snitched on El Chapo. Now El Chapo son set up El Mayo to be captured. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, but this is my question for you, Dre. I just wanted to put that information out there. This is my question. Do you feel like these high-level criminals, like 
are they like is snitching becoming just part of a game like it seemed like snitching is okay once they get up to them high levels like that i feel like yes once you get up to these high levels everybody just turns dirt bag back door complete back door it's almost like the saying goes the streets are dead it's like everybody's telling nobody's abiding by any old school rules it's pretty much the wild wild west out there so when you get up to those higher levels of you know criminal activity i guess you should expect I would not be able to trust nobody. I would be so, I'm already so paranoid. So I couldn't even imagine, you know, getting all the way up there, did all the dirt. And then now, you know, I would feel like I have to wash my back forever. So I'm actually surprised that he fell into a trap like that. He should have known. He should have had at least a little bit of an inkling, but honestly, can I, can can't. I trick you on a plane, Drea? What, what, where can I say we going where you would just hop on the plane? No questions asked. See, it probably had to do with money and business. He probably had him going to check some some stuff out and he let his guard down and he just didn't even, it's just really crazy because when you are in that kind of field, I feel like you have to watch your back forever. Like I, you have to watch your back forever. You even got to watch the bodyguard. You got to watch everything. So I feel like it was only a matter of time probably before he slipped and took the bait. So that is a super backdoor situation, but Living in 2024, I feel like everything is backdoor. Everything is gutter. Everything is conniving. It's kind of like what social media is showing us. The news shows us that every day. Um, and it seems like just everyone is just so, I don't know, man. But especially out in a field like sales, that. Out for themselves, man. Trust they, no, yeah. Everybody everybody's out for so self. out for the. Everybody is so out for themselves. Everybody is so vindictive. Everybody has a, like, Everybody ulterior has, like, motives a, ulterior motive an axe to grind an old school you know what i mean instead of just letting karma do what it has to do um well, maybe that is karma because if you if you've done something getting that straight back but in a field like that i feel like you could trust no one and it's only a matter of time before you you know fall on the sword that you've probably been swinging around so wow he's probably a little bit relieved because he's in jail at least he doesn't have to completely look over his back 24 hours and he said well no no he does no he's in jail yeah i was gonna say he they i mean he, he snitched on el chapo you could you could you could kind of say that el mayo made it okay to snitch on el chapo so it's probably people that love chapo that's very upset with with, with him and that's kind of how he got tricked into america in the first place you know what i'm saying do the snitching rules need to be rewritten in 2024 i don't think so because no one's abiding by it though i mean you might he, not snitch your buddy's gonna snitch. You go down as the one with the honor, but you you're in jail for the rest of your life. So how does that work? I mean, I look at it like seatbelts. Like it's a law that say you're supposed to wear your seatbelt, but most people don't. But the law still exists, and it's for a reason. Cause seatbelt to save your life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like eat, eating your charges and, and standing up and being a man. You you will be rewarded for that. Um, like you said, through honor, which to me is the most important thing. Like it don't matter if you are a rich rat or 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 an unhonorable person, but you are but you are worldly successful, but you don't got no friends. Um, like you know what I'm saying? What they say, people grew up off of love or, or survival. Will love you, and the people that grew up off of off survival hate you, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's love yeah. and survival. Well, so I feel like the, the people that grew up off love understand you don't tell on your friends. It don't feel good inside your heart. It feel wrong. But then you got the people that grew up off survival that in that it, when they in that police station, that's the only way to survive is to tell on their friends. So then they end up doing it. So I just look at it like it's really some personal man shit. Like I said, man, Drea, if somebody do something to you, you could tell them, you could tell on their ass every day. <laughs> I don't tell. I don't tell. I don't need, I don't need, you know. But you know, you a real you nigga do. though. So, but but you don't gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. Like as women, children, families, we supposed to protect y'all. Boy, y'all ain't gotta be in this shit at all. You know what I'm saying? And nobody well, gonna me- hold it against you. Let me ask you this and be 100% honest, okay? This is the scenario. You and your guy do some dirt together, whatever it is that you guys did. You guys get locked up. Mm-hmm. 
the police come to you in a room and tell you that your friend is now telling on you. And at first you probably don't believe them because you know how they use tactics to try to trick everybody. But then right. you end up really realizing by information that he is telling on you and he's he's forging a deal for himself. Right. You get that information and then they give you the opportunity to start creating your deal. What do you do? You're looking at, and mind you, whatever you guys did, you guys are looking at felony life in prison. Right, significant time. I ain't gonna lie, man. Significant Drew, time. When you're it comes to shit like that. Girl, you're not gonna see your kids and your friend already told on you. What right. are you gonna do? When it when it comes to stuff like that, Dre, I'll be real, man. When I'm not in that life no more, so I don't gotta worry about that. You see what I'm saying? But when I was occasionally dibbling and dabbling and being a part of certain shit, you gotta take, you know the consequences before you do it. So when you do some shit, you gotta take into account the consequences before. So let's say I got 50 pounds in my trunk. You accept the responsibility when you do the shit before you ever get caught. And that really, to be honest, it really helped your ass from doing the wrong shit. Cause certain shit, if you know you can't take what's coming with it, shit, you don't do it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people out here right now will completely turn state's evidence and tell. So it's good to hear, you know, that somebody is still upstanding. There's no right or wrong answer to that. Honestly, obviously, if you do do some dirt, you gotta go down for what you did. That's the stand up way to do it. But, what, what you would do? I wouldn't tell, but I also wouldn't be in the situation in the first place, so I can't really evaluate right, what I would do. But most likely, I wouldn't be doing anything illegal with somebody I can't trust. Like, you really, really gotta just, if you can, you gotta do your dirt by yourself. That's the only person that's gonna keep the secret.